Hey, hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. Sometimes the unexpected twists and turns lead us to stories we never imagined we'd be a part of. Today on our space, brace yourself for a tale of love, deception, and a plot twist that even the most seasoned storytellers couldn't have concocted. Wife cheated on me with her sister's husband. We humiliated them in front of both the families. I'm 28 male, married to Jane, 27 female. My love story is very simple and short. Jane and I met through an online dating app. I'm not really an online dating guy, but I was going through a really hard breakup in my early 20s. My friends saw me in a very miserable state and they forced me to join a dating app. They just went ahead and made a profile without asking or telling me. They just informed me later that they had done it. I was sort of mad at them, but I thought I might as well give it a try. I went through some of those profiles. One of them turned out to be Jane. We connected and went out on a date after a couple of conversations. The date went well and we began to meet frequently. After a while, we fell in love and I decided to make things permanent and proposed to her. Jane said yes and we got married immediately. My daughter, Lily, was born about eight months ago and it was the happiest moment of my life so far. Jane and I had been so excited to become parents, we had always looked forward to it and could not wait to handle this new joy and responsibility of life together. After that, however, Jane was going through postpartum depression and it really got bad. I knew and I was familiar with it, but it turned out to be worse than what I had expected. Jane was in a really miserable state at times and it pained me that I could not just pull her out of it. I tried my best to be there for my wife and my daughter. I tried to handle a lot of work. I even took a few weeks off from my job until we found a good nanny. I helped Jane with Lily and I did everything that I could do to make her feel loved by me. However, her condition was not getting better mentally and our doctor suggested that we consult a psychiatrist as that would help. He assured me that a lot of new parents went through it and there was nothing extremely abnormal about it. I began to feel drained by this huge change in life. We went to the psychiatrist, as suggested by the doctor, and our treatment and therapy began. I could feel immense change in me, and Jane also said that she was beginning to feel better. I was glad that we found a good nanny. I was able to return to work again, and life was getting normal. Things got even better when Jane's sister, Bonnie, and her husband, Dave, moved to New York from another city. They took an apartment that was quite close to ours, and that changed a lot of things. We began to hang out together, and that really cheered Jane up a lot. Bonnie and Dave often offered to babysit Lily, and they were really good at it. That allowed us to get our date nights back. I made sure to surprise Jane with little things to make her feel loved and cared for. However, one day, a strange incident happened. It was a weekend, and I was anticipating our usual date night. I had asked Bonnie if she was available to stay with Lily, and she had said yes. I had planned to take Jane to the restaurant where I had proposed to her. It was our favorite restaurant, and we went there for special occasions and celebrations. I had not told her, and had decided to keep it a surprise, and I was really excited about it. But Jane refused to go out that weekend. I kept asking her the reason, and she refused to say anything. I asked her if she was feeling alright, and she insisted that she was fine. I did not know what was wrong. I got upset myself because I had made the reservations and had paid for it, and I really wanted us to have a good time where we did not have to think of anything else. Jane was being really rude to me and answering in a weird manner. I got mad at her too. I did not say much to her, except tell her that I had made reservations for us and I really wanted to make her feel good. I had expected a little bit of goodness from her, but her attitude remained bad. She gave no reaction, answered rudely, and left the room. She called Bonnie and told her not to come to babysit Lily. I'm sure Bonnie was surprised too. By that time, I had gotten really frustrated. I took the car keys and left to drive somewhere alone. I could not deal with Jane like that. She was not being vocal and was not communicating how she was feeling and it was driving me crazy. For the past few months, I knew it had been immensely hard for Jane with the pain of childbirth and postpartum depression, but I had been nothing but good to her. I had been making all the needed efforts for my wife, but at the end of the day, I'm a human myself. I needed to feel loved too. I also got drained and tired. I had never let out my exhaustion at my family. No matter how tired I had been, I never talked rudely to Jane. I always acted fine and pretended to be normal. Moreover, it's been eight months since I'm dealing with this. With Bonnie and David coming into the picture, I was hoping things would get better and it did get better, but after last evening's incident, I feel we are going back to square one. Why could she not do that for once? Or was it not her fault and she just could not help it? It's hard to say. She might have very well been going through something in that moment and just wanted to stay in. But the way that it was handled wasn't ideal, especially since you guys have been going through therapy. I mean, the therapist likely said communication is important in a relationship. So it's disappointing that she's refused to talk to you and just seemed to have shut down. You tried your best, OP. I'm sorry. 
Update 1. I was upset at Jane the last time that she behaved like a stranger towards me, but I somehow convinced myself that it was not her fault and it was just an emotional reaction to this particularly hard phase of her life. I was like, that woman gave me a beautiful daughter so I could also be more tolerant towards her. I love her a lot. I did not want her to feel bad because of me in some way, so I made up to her. I apologized for getting infuriated by her reaction. Jane was reluctant, but she made up. She didn't accept that some of the things that she did and said were not fair to me, but I let that go. As long as she was happy, nothing else mattered to me more. Things got slightly better, especially in the presence of Jane's sister. Jane felt very calm and relaxed around Bonnie, I observed. I was happy about it. At least she was at peace in someone's company, and that was enough for me. One day, I was coming home from work. I texted Jane to ask her if she needed anything that I could bring on my way home. Jane replied that she was at Bonnie's with Lily. I thought I might go to Bonnie's apartment and surprise her. I got some tacos for all of us and went to Bonnie's apartment. I knocked at the door. It took some more time than usual for David to answer the door. He was delighted and surprised to see me. We went inside and I saw Jane sitting in the living room with Lily asleep on the couch. Jane seemed a little distracted, but she said that she was fine. I asked about Bonnie and I told them I had brought tacos for everyone for dinner. Jane told me that Bonnie had gone out to get some milk as they had run out of it, and David had just gotten home from work. I know it should not be like that, but it bothered me a little to know that David and Jane were alone in the apartment. I immediately brushed the thought out of my head, reminding myself that David was just like a brother to Jane. She treated him like her brother, and she was her sister's husband, so letting such a weird thought in my head was very low of me. I scolded myself in my mind and decided never to think of such an obnoxious thing again. David and I watched a soccer game while we waited for Bonnie. Bonnie came after about 20 minutes with milk and some other things. She was happy to see all of us together. We had a great time. Jane felt good and it was obvious. Talking to David also made me feel much better than before. While driving back home, I asked Jane if she was feeling good after spending such quality time with Bonnie and David. Jane still seemed a little distracted and distant as if she was not fully present and was not really listening to me. She had been so lively and happy at Bonnie's, but as soon as we got into the car, her entire aura changed. She murmured that yes, she was feeling great, but her expression said something else. I did not want to ruin our moods, so I let her be and dropped the conversation without pressing to discuss anything further. When we got home, I put Lily to sleep and kissed Jane. She barely kissed me back and said that she was too tired and needed to sleep. I wonder when Jane would get normal with me. I'm really missing my wife that way she used to be. I want my normal, lovely, and happy Jane back. I wanted her to be joyful and at peace. Seeing her so distressed is really painful for me too. She's rejecting any sort of love that I'm offering her. She's not reciprocating the efforts that I'm extending to her. I don't know how long I can endure this behavior before I go insane. She makes me feel as if I'm a stranger to her and it hurts more than I could ever imagine. I want my normal life back with my wife and daughter. I don't want to be waking up every day to a distant Jane who would not open up to me and push me away every time that I took a step towards her. I want her to feel at ease and behave normally like the happy family that we used to be. Any advice on dealing with this severe of postpartum depression would be really helpful. Uh, can you speak to your therapist? I think if you're noticing something off with your wife, it's important to speak to them about it and just try to remain supportive of your wife. It's definitely a hard time to navigate, but the best thing you can do is be supportive and help around the house and with Lily as much as you can. Update two. My instinct says that Jane is up to something, but I don't know if I'm just overthinking. I've continued being good to Jane and she continued being distant and kept pushing me away. It was driving me crazy because I was unable to grasp the actual problem. I could not find a solution until I was aware of what was actually wrong. A few weeks later, it became clear to me why she had been acting that way. A few weeks ago, I was sitting in the living room and Lily was in her cot. Jane was in the kitchen making lunch for us. Her phone began to ring. At the same time, Lily began to cry and I had to pick her up. I called Jane, but she probably didn't hear me. I took the phone to take it to Jane, but saw her on screen that it was David who was calling her. I picked up the phone thinking it must be Bonnie, but it was actually David. He was a little disturbed when he heard my voice as if he was not expecting me. I asked him how he was and then he had told me that he had dialed Jane's number by mistake. He had meant to call someone else. He muttered and then hung up at the call saying that he was at work and was busy. Jane came into the living room asking who had called on her phone. I told her that it was David and that he had called her by mistake. Jane's face turned red. She got really mad at me. She began to speak really loudly and asked why I had answered the phone without asking her. I told her that I was bringing the phone to her in the kitchen, but I saw David's name, and so I answered it. Jane began to lecture me about how I had abraded her privacy. She said that it had showed that I had no respect for her. 
I assured her that she was overthinking it and making things up. I had just done it, so the call was not missed. Jane scared Lily so much that she started crying inconsolably. Jane still did not stop and kept shouting. I picked Lily up and carried her outside. I was hoping to calm her down somehow. I could hear Jane still shouting as I left the house. I don't know what had gotten inside her. It was getting too much for me now. It was not as big of a deal as Jane had made it into. Why had she gotten all defensive and enraged? It was so abnormal. I did not know where to go, so I just walked over to Bonnie and David's apartment. I was hoping to spend some time with them so I could take my mind off of things that had just happened. Bonnie was overjoyed to see Lily. I asked about David and Bonnie told me that he had gone to pick up some stuff from the supermarket and that he would be home soon. I was very distressed with everything that had happened. I needed to share the stress that I was going through with someone and so I decided to tell Bonnie. I shared the entire incident about how David had called by mistake from work and Jane had completely overreacted. She had been extremely rude and mean and could not control her rage. She just kept on shouting and so I had to take Lily out of that environment for some time. Bonnie stopped me in the middle of the narration of the incident and asked if I was sure that David had called as David had been home all day and had not been to work that day. It confused me as David had lied to me that he was at work. It was stuck in my head, but we let that go for some time and began to discuss Jane and that she was not all right and that something needed to be done for real as things were getting out of hand. Bonnie tried to calm me down and explained that Jane was suffering mentally and she acknowledged the fact that it was really hard for me, but she asked me to just remember the fact that I loved her a lot and that it was one immensely hard and challenging phase of my life that would pass. Half an hour later, David got home. We talked and drank beer, and then I took Lily home. I was a little hesitant to face Jane. When I got home, Jane was in the bedroom. I brought Lily to her. She didn't say a word to me. She took Lily in her arms and kissed her. I went forward and kissed Jane and she let me. She whispered a sorry to me as Lily was asleep and Jane did not want to wake her up. I nodded and mouthed, it's okay. I felt really good as I realized that there was hope after all, and eventually, things would get normal again. Oh, okay, I see now. The moment someone gets mad at you for answering your phone or handing you their phone means they have something to hide. At the same time, anger like that can be a sign of postpartum depression. Something definitely sounds off, that's for sure. Update 3 My instinct said that it was way beyond postpartum depression. Indeed it was. After the last update, I was hoping that things would get better between us. However, that feeling did not last long, as I got to know the reality behind Jane's actions. One day, about three weeks ago, I was at the office when I got a call from Bonnie. Bonnie was crying and sounded devastated. I got worried and asked her if everything was okay. She said that we needed to meet to talk about something. I said that I was at work. She said that it was extremely urgent and she could not tell it over the phone. She asked if I could meet her somewhere outside the house. I said sure and told her to meet me at a cafe in an hour. Bonnie warned me not to tell about it to anyone. It felt weird why she wanted to keep it confidential. I got off work early and drove to the cafe. Bonnie was already there. She looked really bad. It was obvious that she had been crying her eyes out. Her hair was a mess. She told me that Jane and David were sleeping together. My mouth dropped open in disbelief. Out of all the things that I had thought of on my way, that was not even close. She continued and told me that she was at our house and she was looking after Lily as Jane had asked her to take care of Lily for a day when she was out shopping for some stuff. Lily was sleeping and Bonnie just sat down and read a book. She thought she heard Lily cry, so she looked into the baby monitor, but the baby monitor was not working. While trying to fix the monitor, Bonnie began to go through the computer where all the footage of the baby monitor was recorded. As the monitor started working, she began to go through the computer to kill time. She went through some files and stumbled upon some old footage recorded by the baby monitor. She saw David in one of them, followed by Jane, and they started having sex. Bonnie said that she could not stop crying since then. I could not believe what Bonnie had just told me. She immediately opened her phone and showed me the image. She said that she had kept a copy of the recording just in case. She was going to use it to confront Jane and David, but she needed to run it past me first. After listening to all of this, it began to make sense. Jane had reacted so weirdly at David's call because she was guilty of cheating on me with him. She had been alone with him one day. I could put all of those weird incidents together, and they began to make sense now. Bonnie had already cried, but... Now I needed some time to process all of it before I took some action. I wanted to cry, but tears just did not come out. My heart felt very heavy, and I felt hollow inside my chest. I asked Bonnie what her plan was. Bonnie told me that she had decided to do a huge revelation to Jane and David together in front of everyone. I was a little skeptical of doing it in front of people, but when I thought of the humiliation and embarrassment that they would have to face, I felt a satisfaction in my heart. Bonnie and I planned this surprise party for Jane. We wanted to make her feel special which was what we portrayed to our friends and family that we invited over. 
David had a hint about it, but he was not really involved in the arrangements. Mostly, it was just Bonnie and I, so we made sure that things went according to our plan. I took Jane out for some time while Bonnie completed the final preparations. She arranged a huge screen where we were going to play the video that we had captured from the baby monitor. Bonnie texted me telling me that most people had arrived and so I took Jane home. Jane was surprised to see everything. She turned around to me and hugged and thanked me. I wanted to push her away, but I somehow controlled myself once again. As the guests settled, we played the video on the screen and the whole place was filled with shock. All of them began to whisper and murmur among themselves. Jane's mother slapped Jane in front of everyone before leaving without saying a word. David and Jane had nothing to say. They knew saying anything was useless and nobody was going to believe them either. When all the guests had left and it was just the four of us, I told Jane that I had filed for divorce and that she would see me in court. Bonnie screamed and abused David and Jane and left the apartment. She went to live with her parents. She too was taking a divorce. I moved out of my house that very day and shifted with a friend for a few days until I found a new place. It hurt like hell. I had been betrayed by David, whom I had considered my brother, and Jane, who was my wife and the mother of my beautiful daughter. I felt really bad for Lily and for the kind of mother that she had. We got divorced and I got half custody of my daughter. I'm hoping to get complete custody soon as Lily grows a little. It will be easy because Jane does not earn much. As for David, he got fired from his job because he was actually working for one of Bonnie's friends. When Bonnie's friend found out about Jane and David, he obviously sided with Bonnie and fired David. Seeing David jobless and humiliated made me feel slightly better. He really deserved it. I had kept him like a brother and he had chosen to stab me in the back and he also deceived his own wife. I'm trying my best to put this nightmare behind me to start a normal life where there is only a place for my daughter, Lily. I'm sorry, OP. It's undoubtedly a difficult situation and you honestly did all you could. You treated her so well and you were trying to make it work. You didn't deserve that at all especially from Jane and David. You trusted them both. Moving forward, it's crucial to focus on healing and being the best you can be for Lily. I have no doubt about the latter. Honestly, Jane doesn't deserve the happiness that you and Lily could have given her. She lost the right to that the moment she thought of cheating on you. She lost out on something so beautiful, but you sure did get yours. Kudos on the big reveal. Wishing you and Lily all the best, OP. What do you make of this? What would you have done when you found out? Thank you for joining us today on our space. Like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Until next time.